Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Better Rides, Better Riders. Yamaha, snowmobiles built for the real world. That's the Yamaha Advantage. And by FXR Racing, world class outerwear. This is a very exciting time of year for everyone here at Snow Tracks. We spent the whole winter putting big miles on our entire fleet of test units, and we've been critiquing them and nitpicking them unscrupulously. We've been through a wide range of emotions about every model and have come to some very interesting conclusions. It's also a bittersweet time of year because this is the last Snow Tracks episode of the season and we love what we do. But riddle me this, if you combine the last episode of Snow Tracks with a ton of miles on our press fleet, what do you get? You get what we feel is the most honest, realistic, and experienced-based award in the industry. Today, we're going to reveal to you our pick for the 2013 Snow Tracks Real World Sled of the Year. If you're new to the show, a bit of background might be helpful. The Real World Sled of the Year Award is designed to highlight a sled we feel provides the best overall riding experience for an average rider by combining performance, handling, ride quality, economy, comfort, and value. The reason this is the most coveted award in the industry is because it's one the consumer can trust and rely on. When many other media outlets are picking their favorites before the snow even hits the ground, we wait until we've put real miles on these sleds on real trails. Our decisions are based on experience, not assumptions. This season in particular has really been an eye-opener in a few ways. First and foremost, sleds are getting better. All of them. The riding experience you get on any of today's new iron will be very, very pleasing. However, we have noticed a few standout performers. We've come up with a list of eight sleds that really impressed us. In no particular order, here they are. Arctic Cats Pro Cross 1100 LXR and XF 800 Snow Pro, Yamaha's Vector EPS and Nitro XTX 175, Polaris's Switchback 800 Pro R and Switchback Adventure 800, and finally, Skidoo's MXZX 600 E-Tech and Renegade X 800 E-Tech, both in the XS bodywork. These eight sleds have the most miles on them because they all provided an excellent mix of all the important traits a great day on the trail requires. When we line up all 21 sleds in our fleet in the morning, these are always the first eight leaving the compound. That says it all in my opinion. Looking at this list does show some weak points already though. The Procross 1100 LXR is a bit underpowered and despite its great ride and good handling, simply didn't have enough grunt to impress. Yamaha's Nitro XTX 175 is impressive in deep snow, no question. And we do still love this three-cylinder motor. But this is a sled that appeals to a very specific rider for a very specific purpose, so it's not very real world. Polaris's Switchback Adventure 800 is absolutely impressive in every way. But it comes with a list of upgrades the average rider doesn't really need, but will have to pay for. And finally, Skidoo's MXZX 600 E-Tech with R-Motion was definitely the favorite of many, but its aggressive front end leads to darty handling. These four sleds deserve recognition and respect for being excellent performers. Unfortunately, they get eliminated from this competition early. This leaves our four finalists. Arctic Cat's Procross XF 800 Snow Pro, Yamaha's Vector with EPS, Polaris's Switchback 800 Pro R, and Skidoo's Renegade 800 E-Tech with R-Motion. Any one of these sleds would provide any type of trail rider with any level of skill an absolutely excellent riding experience day in and day out, all season long. Each one of these sleds has been critiqued and discussed trailside, argued about over lunch, and fiddled with in the shop. And every member of our test crew would be happy to ride any one of them. The other day I was out riding with a large group of people. There were 12 of us from all different backgrounds and experience levels. We had a wide cross section of sleds, including all four Sled of the Year finalists. And while I was riding, I was pondering one thought. I'm extremely fortunate to have the opportunity to ride an entire fleet of the newest and trickest sleds every season. Every day I ride, I get to pick any one I want. 
Some days I need to ride sleds I'm not excited about to gain the experience needed to develop my opinions on what's working and what's not. It's this opportunity that really does make the best of the best stand out. And the most obvious proof is simply the answer to these two questions. At the beginning of each day, which sled do I want to ride? And at the end of each day, which sled do I wish I'd been riding? As I was compiling all the rider feedback for this competition, I asked all the riders those two questions. The response was overwhelming. The Polaris Switchback 800 Pro R and the Skidoo Renegade X with R Motion are the two sleds nearly every rider we have ever taken out for test sessions said they would pick if they could and wish they had picked when they hadn't. Our trusted test riders range from young to old, aggressive to mellow, male and female. The cross section is varied and the riders are real people and none have any bias towards one brand over another. This is all the convincing I needed to narrow down our two finalists, but I do think it's very important to note. Articat's XF800 Snow Pro is an excellent snowmobile and is very deserving of its third place finish. It's got the industry's most powerful 800 motor it's arguably the coolest looking sled ever made. In 2013, its shock package was toned down a bit, so it rides very good and it handles great. For all you Arctic Cat guys angry about the 800 Snow Pro not making the final two, know this. We really, really like this sled a lot and have put more miles on it alone than any other sled in our fleet. But given the option, it's not the favorite. You can send all the hate mail you want because I said it, but it won't make it any less true. The most difficult job we have here at Snow Tracks each season is picking one of our two finalists as the winner, and this season was the toughest ever. Skidoo's new XS bodywork and R-Motion rear skid have pushed the Renegade X into a whole new realm of ride quality and rider comfort. Polaris has further massaged its Switchback 800 into a predictable, stable, and excellent riding trail carver. In 2013, Skidoo released what they call the XS chassis. In reality, the XS is just an XP with different plastic. Under the plastic, it's all the same stuff. But the new bodywork provides better wind protection and is therefore warmer. It has convenient storage spaces that can actually hold real stuff and it looks cool. The design of the R-Motion skid frame is incredibly innovative and the rapid adjust knobs on the tunnel are not just gimmicks, they are supremely useful. This rear suspension can take the most gnarly whooped out trails and make them feel freshly groomed. The Renegade handles exactly like you expect it to. It goes exactly where you point it. It's aggressive and stays perfectly flat all the time. But these traits do give it a bit of a nervous feel on hard pack trails and it can be slightly heavy to steer for smaller riders. Performance from Skidoo's 800 E-Tech is, as it's always been, excellent. It's the second fastest 800 and it gets the best gas mileage, hands down. It starts and idles perfect every time, no matter the conditions or the temperatures. Basically, this is as close to perfect as an 800 two-stroke has ever been. Ergonomically, the Rev XS chassis is hit or miss. Those who like it, really like it. Those who don't, can just never seem to get comfortable. This is not a negative, it's simply a matter of personal preference. Polaris rocked the snowmo world with their out of tunnel suspension on the very first Rush model. Its extended 136 version quickly became a more on-trail specific switchback. Ride quality aboard the switchback is stellar and highly tunable. The front end with its Walker Evans shocks is every bit as smooth as the rear. On a rough Sunday afternoon, a switchback would be a very smart choice. Handling is where the switchback really stands out though. It doesn't feel laser guided and doesn't corner as flat as the Rev. This is not to say it's not precise, it is, but not as edgy as the XS. With that said, what it lacks in precision, it more than makes up for in predictability and straight tracking. Ergonomically, the switchback seems to fit everyone. In fact, we've been hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't like how you sit on it or how it feels to ride. The left hand switch gear gets unanimously bad reviews, but every other aspect of this sled's ergonomic layout gets 10 out of 10s. Performance from Polaris's Clean Fire 800 is more than adequate and quite impressive. 
It doesn't have quite as much jam as the E-Tech, but still pulls super hard. It's decent on gas, not the worst, but it's absolutely amazing on oil. Mile for mile, the Renegade X is only very slightly cheaper to operate. Where the Pro R is predictable and doesn't hunt or dart on the trail, the Renegade X is precise and flat. Where the Pro R is comfortable and nearly ergonomically perfect to sit on, the Renegade X includes R motion and a number of other useful features the Polaris doesn't. Where the Renegade includes E-Tech, which is better engine technology that provides smoother starting and idling, the Pro R costs less to buy. They're both pretty sexy looking and they both ride great. This is a conundrum. It's a pickle, if you will. And to pick a winner would be splitting hairs, but credit must be given where it's due. The Renegade's build quality, innovative features, and near perfect E-Tech performance push it one step ahead of the switchback. However, I do think this raises an interesting point, one that was addressed in our more performance-oriented 800 crossover shootout earlier this season. Polaris is building snowmobiles that perform every bit as well as the Skidoos do on the trail. In this respect, these two sleds are equals and picking a winner would be impossible. But placing the two side by side shines a light on the near perfect build quality and some of the more rider focused features the Skidoo includes, but that Polaris needs to work on. We see the epic battle between these two sleds continuing in the future and we clearly see closer competition from the other runners up as well. But in 2013, Skidoo's Renegade X 800 E-Tech with our motion has impressed us all and has crowned the Snowtrack's real world sled of the year. It's no surprise that in our sport, we rely pretty heavily on mother nature to provide us with the snow that we need each year to properly operate our sleds in the conditions that they were designed for. This Yamaha Nitro XTX comes factory equipped with a 1.75 inch lug track for free riding and boondocking. 1.75 lug tracks work great in flatland powder conditions and are acceptable on early or late season trails that have not frozen solid. But what if your ride area didn't get the snow you expected? What can you do to still get the best performance possible in low snow conditions? Installing an aftermarket track is always an option to rectify a situation like I've outlined, and in most cases will produce superior performance, especially on a sled like this Yamaha Nitro XTX. Boondocking requires decent snow conditions. If mother nature skipped over your region and your conditions are limited, a 1.75 lug track can make your sled feel pretty squirrely on hard packed and icy trails. And the perfect answer to that dilemma is a pre-studded track from Camoplast. In particular, the Ice Attack XT is the track that I'd pick for this 144 inch sled. It's got a 1.22 inch lug profile and a generous amount of pre-molded studs. Ooh, that's sharp. Featuring up to six studs per row of lugs, the Ice Attack XT delivers incredible bite on the trails, no matter the surface conditions. The 1.22 lug profile is still tall enough that if you do encounter powder, you can be sure you'll still be able to have some fun, while not being too tall for standard trail riding. Installation of a new track is like comparing guava to dragon fruit when it comes to your specific sled. The only things that'll stay true is that you need to split the chain case, drop the suspension, and remove the drive axle. A Yamaha Nitro would have to be one of the trickiest sleds to do a track swap on. Components are very technical, feature many parts, and have special spacers and O-rings you might not be aware of. Taking your time and being methodical about what comes off is key. If you're not comfortable with a pile of 20 more parts sitting on the ground after you've taken this apart, take your sled to a dealer and have them do the swap for you. With the old track out of the way, the new one's gonna go back in just as simply as retracing the steps I just showed you. Fitting the suspension back into the tunnel can actually be the hardest part of the swap. Torsion springs may need to be released to allow the tunnel mounts to line up. The clutch goes back on and the chain case is rebuilt. While it may sound strange, remember to refill the chain case with oil, as this can be easily overlooked. To really find out how this track works, I thought I'd take it out to the trails and get real world experience with a 144 inch pre-studded track. And right away I could tell that the Ice Attack XT delivers incredible traction. The Nitro motor spools huge torque, and this track is able to bite the ground and lift the skis where the stock 175 would have spun nervously. Exiting corners is fast and precise, and thanks to such a low profile stud design, I don't sense that typical pushing in the corners that a traditional drilled stud would produce. While acceleration feels great, stopping is also enhanced, especially in slippery conditions, where the rear of the sled stays true no matter how hard you grab the brakes. 
slowing the slide much quicker than the stock track would and providing improved confidence in low snow conditions. While changing a track might seem like a pretty big deal, consider it the same as installing winter tires in your car or your truck. You're not only going to enhance the safety of your riding experience, you're also going to increase the performance of your snowmobile. Last year, Snow Tracks launched the Revolutionary Advanced Design, or RAD Award, to recognize technology that we believe has advanced and will continue to advance the state of the modern snowmobile. This year's selection may be a little bit controversial. However, we're convinced Polaris Quick Drive System is an idea that is pushing the developmental envelope. Why is Quick Drive potentially controversial for our 2013 RAD Award? Anytime an OEM pushes the limits of design, there's risk involved. The initial execution of the revolutionary belt drive system had a small glitch, a glitch that was immediately and effectively rectified. Moving forward, we believe the substitution of the traditional, heavy, awkward snowmobile chain case with a lightweight, low inertia and simple tooth belt drive system is the way of the future. If lightweight is important, and it surely is, then quick drive simply cannot be overlooked. There's no way you can deny the weight savings generated by quick drive. The incredibly successful Pro RMK 800 weighs just 417 pounds. That's five pounds less than Polaris' new 550 Indy fan. So the 2013 winner of Snowtrax Television's RAD Award is Polaris Quick Drive System on the 2013 Pro RMK 800. We believe this first rethink of the traditional snowmobile drive system is only the tip of the developmental iceberg. The net effect of quick drive is exactly what RAD is all about, advancing snowmobile design in a revolutionary way. On an earlier episode of Snow Tracks, I told you that our final show of the season would have a special look at the all new Yamaha SR Viper. And after riding the 2014s for an entire week, I've got what you're looking for. No, I'm not gonna sit here and show you strictly showroom footage of the sled because I've got the real world seat time on this sled and I know that's what you wanna see. So without further ado, I'll let Chris Reed from Yamaha Motor Canada walk you through what this new sled means to Yamaha and their future in the business. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sights and sounds of what may be the biggest news to hit the snowmobile industry in years. Well, Yamaha has a three-year midterm plan, a five-year long-term plan, and we have a vision for a complete future in snowmobiles. The supply agreement that we've made uh, with Articat is part of that vision, but it's not the total vision. Yamaha remains committed to developing and building our own snowmobiles, and our engineers are currently working on some new projects, and they're very excited about what we can bring to the future. We won't be able to discuss that, of course, until seasons to come, but when you look at the strengths of the two companies working together on some of these products, um, we will never sacrifice our quality. Any machine that we bring to market will meet our standards, we have certain performance expectations. We know what our customers are looking for in the future, what they've asked us to provide. Um, currently with the SR Viper, this chassis with our engine is a home run. It works great. Can we make it any better? Absolutely. Do we have ideas for the future? You betcha we do. We want to put our own DNA into these snowmobiles. We want to make them unique to Yamaha, and we want to deliver what our customers expect from us, both in durability, quality, performance, handling, lightweight, it's the whole package. And working together with our friends with this supply arrangement, we'll be able to deliver this product faster and better to meet our customers' expectations. This new Viper absolutely rips and delivers incredible handling characteristics and amazing performance. But what about the concerns of consumers? What I'm seeing now is our customers, snowmobilers in general, have a bigger choice in the market. The snowmobile that we've brought in the guise of the SR Viper will give the heart of the Yamaha in a great handling chassis. The two married together make for a very good snowmobile that's not available really from any of our competitors in that horsepower category and certainly with some of the attributes that the frame brings forward. The customer himself is gonna to have to look at a bigger picture. Who's gonna take care of me after I buy this snowmobile? Who do I wanna deal with? What's the proximity of the dealership from my home? What's 
my brand experience, because there's a lot of brand loyalty in snowmobiling. Do I like green? Do I like blue? It could come down to something as simple as that. There are some differentiators on that snowmobile that maybe that'll be a deal breaker for some people. Other people, it may simply be the fact that the relationship that they have with their dealer goes that far back that they're not willing to drive farther or around the block even to get a different color snowmobile. It may be as simple as they like blue. And what a blue it is. The Yamaha Viper is the best looking sled on snow for 2014. And you know what? It might just be the best handling. But to determine that, you're gonna have to tune in next year. So for right now, I wanna say thanks for watching us this season. Ride safe, ride sober, and we'll see you next year on Snow Tracks TV. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, Terrain Domination, Arctic Cat, share our passion. Yamaha, snowmobiles built for the real world. That's the Yamaha Advantage. And by Go Ride Ontario. There's no place like this.